The polar vortex is being forecast to collapse as we enter December. This could lead to a December with well below average temperatures and above average snowfall. The big question is, how significant of a polar vortex breakdown are we looking at? We're going to go over all this in today's video. If you're new here, I upload content like this every single day, and I live stream every morning to try and answer all of your weather-related questions. Our stratospheric polar vortex is forecast to slow and collapse as we get towards the end of November and into the beginning of December. And this may be a significant break of the polar vortex, one that we haven't seen in a long time. This may help to explain why our European extended ensemble sees so much snow in the United States before Christmas. I quickly want to clarify what exactly the polar vortex is before explaining how this upcoming collapse could significantly affect our December in the States. We technically have two polar vortexes, our tropospheric polar vortex and our stratospheric polar vortex. The one we're talking about right now is the stratospheric polar vortex, and this is the polar vortex that holds in the coldest air on the planet. Even colder than that polar air down in Antarctica because of the geography of the land in the northern hemisphere. When we have a stable polar vortex as you can see here, our winds up in the stratosphere over the Arctic are rotating very fast, kind of acting as a force field holding in all of that cold air, not allowing it to escape down into the mid and lower latitudes. This is a strong low pressure up in the stratosphere, ensuring that cold air is trapped. Well, what happens when a higher pressure and warm air begin to move north and push against the stratospheric polar vortex? This is when it destabilizes. And if you get high enough heights and enough warm air, this is when the polar vortex can completely break, displacing the coldest air on the planet down into the mid latitudes, where we are. And this air has no business being down here in the States. It's meant to be up there around the North Pole. Major polar vortex collapses only happen about once every three years. Not only is this collapse expected to be major, but it could be on the high end of a major collapse. I went over this last video, but you can see as we get towards the end of November and the beginning of December, NOAA is projecting that we're going to be much cooler from coast to coast in the United States. We may also see an above average precipitation trend through this time frame. This enhanced cold and precipitation is also being driven by our easterly QBO and our MJO phase we're expected to be pushing into as we we enter December. The QBO or quasi-biennial oscillation is a regular shifting wind direction up in the equatorial stratosphere. About every 26 to 30 months, these winds shift direction from west to east to east to west or the other way around. Currently, we are in a very strong easterly QBO and our analogs show us a La Nina with an easterly QBO can actually set up some decent troughing across the US. This can lead to colder air in a more stormy pattern. So what does this have to do with our potential major polar vortex breakdown? Well, look at this chart. 92% of years with an easterly QBO and La Nina saw a sudden stratospheric warming event or an SSW. And where is that warming occurring? Up over the Arctic. This is what triggers that polar vortex breakdown. Look at our other percentages, 46%, 62%, 77%, all compared to 92%. Now let's compound this on top of one more thing. I brought up the MJO or Matt and Julian oscillation. We're currently in a phase six of the MJO cycle and project it to go into phase seven as we get into the end of November. And then as we push towards mid-December, we're expected to enter phase eight. Phase eight is typically a very cold and very wintry pattern for the United States. And in my last video, I pulled up all the analogs and showed why. So if you want to go check that out after this video, you'll get a little bit more information on the MJO. But think about all of these things combined. The point is here, there's a lot pointing towards this polar vortex breakdown. Watch our height anomalies up in the stratosphere as we move through November. Look at all this red that begins to encompass the Arctic stratosphere. This right here is basically what all of our global models are forecasting. Once that cold air is displaced though, where will it go? Here's our European weekly, and it thinks it's heading right down to the States. Look at the central and eastern US as we move through the first, second, and third week of December. We're seeing a constant troughing pattern out east with potentially some Alaskan ridging and blocking. If this verifies, it's going to lead to enhanced cold air and snow, maybe even not just for the east, but from coast to coast for December in the US. This article from Severe Weather Europe was just released yesterday, and I want to read you a portion of it. Polar Vortex Watch, a stratospheric warming event is about to start with cold weather and snow to follow behind. The title's pretty upfront. It lets you know what to expect. A significant disruption of the polar vortex is about to start due to an unusually early sudden stratospheric warming event. The forecast shows a collapse of the polar circulation in the second half of the month with cold weather and snow to follow across the United States 
and Canada. They make sure to say with cold weather and snow to follow because with a stratospheric polar vortex collapse, that cold air isn't immediately displaced. It can typically take a week or two for that cold air to make it down into the mid latitudes and begin circulating. While the polar vortex looks decent at this level in the stratosphere, you can already see the first signs of trouble. A high pressure area is starting to form with a weak warming wave already visible in the outer layers. This warming event has already begun to take place. In the image below, you can see the pressure anomaly at the same level in the stratosphere, which shows the main core of the polar vortex is running with properly low pressure. But here you can better see the developing high pressure anomaly in the stratosphere, which is expected to grow and strengthen further. Last but not least, and this is an extremely important part of this article, we often talk about the strength of the polar vortex, but how do we actually measure it? The simple answer is the winds. The more organized the stratospheric polar vortex is, the stronger the winds are around its core, which usually translates to a stronger influence on the surface. Below is the latest analysis and forecast of the stratospheric winds around the polar vortex. The black line shows the long-term average and the other lines are different forecasts. You can see that all the forecasts indicate a power reduction of the polar vortex over the next two weeks as the high pressure area expands in the stratosphere. Earlier in the video, I explained how those winds around the stratospheric polar vortex act as a force field to hold in that cold air. So what do you think happens when these winds begin to drastically weaken and almost come to a standstill? The collapse of the polar vortex. I don't wanna get ahead of ourselves here, but if you start looking at the end of each global run, there's been a trend. We keep seeing major troughing trying to push down into the US and some significant winter storm systems trying to form as we get towards the end of November. Our European model does see a warm up over the next week or two. You can see this ridging beginning to move up into the plains and then out east. And we're gonna have some powerful storm systems moving into the west coast. As we move a little bit further in time, November 16th, 17th, 18th, those storm systems try to make their way across the plains and we get some more cold air sinking into the west. This could be really nice snow for the Rockies. Pushing out a little bit further towards the third week of November and out towards Thanksgiving. We do have the possibility for a severe weather event out here. Now we're getting 200 plus hours out in this model. So you don't wanna take this too seriously. We'll see the model runs adjust a little bit. We're gonna get a lot of push and pull with this cold and warm air. And a lot of times you do get some severe weather out of that. We're starting to see a lot of precipitation though in the pattern ahead, really from coast to coast. Now, as we get towards the end of this model, this is what I'm talking about. We start to get a real collapse of that polar jet and maybe even a winter storm system trying to move up through the plains. Our latest GFS sees something similar to the Euro. Here's a brief warm up across the plains and out east. All that precipitation moving into the west coast, high elevation snow, low elevation rain, a little bit of a severe threat as we get out there towards November 21st, 22nd, 23rd. And then does this polar jet collapse? Yes, it does in this model run. It's actually pretty crazy to see the Euro and GFS show something so similar 300 plus hours out. But again, this would be a chance for a snowstorm through the plains. And I do think this collapsing air would continue to move out east. I think this is when we'd be seeing the first effects from the collapse of the polar vortex. This is out here near the end of November, right around Thanksgiving time. And by the way, as we get out towards the 21st, 22nd of November, the Canadian model also sees some collapsing cold air with the opportunity for snow through the plains as well. So if you're out there in the plains and you're looking for some snow, these models actually really like that region as we push through the next couple of weeks. So listen, the pattern ahead looks pretty crazy. I upload videos like this every single day. And after I post these videos, I live stream to answer all of your weather related questions. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel and I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video or in the next live stream.